Terry Erickson of Erickson G Architects. Today we're going to look at drawings about airports, especially in this case, a hand drawing set that looks at what's called an ARF, Airfield Rescue Firefighting Building. Now this is a little building in the middle of an airport runway system. Very interesting special case where firefighters have to pretty well live in a building for three days a week. So this is like a little strange institutional building that everyone's got to live there constantly. So it's a fantastic little study. Now what I picked this one appropriately for you is because it's all hand drawn. And then I'm going to show you the final built building. It's going to be interesting to see how it all works. Now today's guest artist is still Jubix Picks, Julia Bonobo. And so we have a new piece for her. I'm going to maybe blow it up about for you to give her a little publicity. She's going to be looking out over us with this interesting drawing about a lion. Okay, so let's put this in the corner back and get going with the presentation. If you see at the bottom, you'll see this is Consolidated Airport Rescue Firefighting Facility and it's TIA, which is Tri uh, Tampa International Airport, Tampa. And PBSJ are the engineers, and HOK Architects is the architectural firm. I'm the design architect on this job, along with the team, very good technical team they have, and, and an aviation group that is a special group just does aviation projects. Now, aviation projects are typically run through the airport. Everybody is what we call a gearhead. That is, they look at this as a technical exercise. Now, I was brought in to give it that other point of view from the design point of view, and my design lead partner said, look, I want you to watercolor every drawing. Now, he was saying that as a kind of a challenge, not thinking that I could do this, but oh, I can do this. <laughs> so I just brought in all these paints and pots and, and airbrushes and brushes, and I said, yeah, yeah, I think I can manage that. So I did the design. I did the presentation, and I did everything by hand, which they, they've never seen because this, these are gearheads. It's all about engineering, and this was fun, and it worked so well. This is, they tell me, one of the most liked little ARFs in North America because it's so sensitive to what people's environment, what they love to live in. Remember, they're stuck there for three days a week, so it's got to be pretty nice. Plus, it's got a community side to it but when it's visited by the community. So it's got to stand for the community, and it's the first thing you see when you drive up to the airport. So in a way, it's got to stand for the airport, too. Looking at this rendering a bit, this is the front and the back, which is kind of interesting to do both the front and the back at once. It's done, just drafted, rendered, like with a straight edge, you just draw it I think with a marker and gouache and watercolor are slapped in and this is a Florida project so just think of Florida what does that mean to you well Florida is wet <laughs> it's about a foot below uh, above and below above sea level and it's constantly sunny and raining at the same time I think three o'clock in the afternoon every day there's a thunderstorm and it goes away quickly and leaves pools of water everywhere glistening in the sun so it's a really active environment full of great sky effects so yeah, i'm just going to slap in some watercolor on the sky very loosely because it's about the big sky there and the landscape super lush always the landscape just grows everywhere and it's the light is very clear and white and beautiful now this didn't come out as brilliant as it is in the original. Uh, the scan's not as strong. So the colors are very basic, and the paint application is kind of watercolory. I usually don't do this, but in this case, because it, it's you can see this building in the middle of a bunch of airstrips, it's it's really going to be something quite different. So I did it as a special kind of illustration, which I'll never have done again, and I probably will never see again. <laughs> so this is a special thing. You look in the front, you see the massing. Now you realize this roof is sloped. It's a gradual slope in one direction. There's a reason for that. I'm going to tell you what it is later. It's, it's kind of, we'll see if you can guess why the roof is sloped. And yeah, it's not supposed to look like a wing. All right. <laughs> it's not a wing. 
even though you're in the airport, not everything has to look like a wing. There's a real rational reason, an engineering reason, why the roof is slowly sloped from one side to another. Now, I use this reason as an excuse, but the way it worked out, all the functions have different heights. So the loading docks for the fight, firefighting vehicles come in one side, and they need a high, high ceiling, whereas the people with people come in on the other side as a low ceiling because that shading device of the canopy is integrated with it, and you need it low to keep the sun out. The sun in Florida is super bright. Now in the middle you have this piece sticking out. On both sides a piece sticks out of the middle. On the front side, at the bottom here, is the residence. The, 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 the firefighters live there and they have their own rooms. They only have little TVs, which I usually don't get, so they're really happy about that. It's a little lower, but it's just cut slightly lower than the roof and it's expressed as a separate, almost residential volume. And on the back side, symmetrical in plan, you'll see the next couple of drawings, you might see a plan from above. You're gonna see a place with an overhang, which is where everybody hangs out and looks at the planes land and take off. Because not a lot to do between fires, and I don't know how often there is a fire in a plane, probably once every couple of years. So, <laughs> so you're gonna be sitting there, looking out the window, watching the planes land, having a cup of coffee, for the rest of your life. <laughs> so this is a, a setup here. Now let's go to the next one. This is the back view at night. Now night, I always find night to be an interesting and mysterious time to make a rendering, especially in an airport, in very sci-fi airports, special light. So this one doesn't really go too much into it, but it's a really basic, rough, textured rendering of the back of it with it, the loading docks and the the roof angling over and flipping down one side, kind of a trendy move. And of course, the little pavilion in the center, there's a lookout where there's always supposed to be someone surveying the, the planes just in case something happens. There's someone there, or a robot at least, or a camera taking, taking a, the scope of the whole landscape. Now this is the roof plan. The roof plan is really special. It, of course, there's a uh, site plan there, and you see these big pools of water? These are called retention ponds. Now, these retention ponds are there to hold the water, uh, the runoff from the rain. They're all over Florida. It's a common way of dealing with water runoff. There's a lot of water runoff, and the water table is very high, so you can't necessarily just vent it all away quickly with pipes. You've got to hold it on the surface, and there's all these beautiful pools everywhere. Sometimes there's a little water feature in the middle of them to make it look prettier. And sometimes they have interesting alligators swimming around in them. But this is this is the plan, and we worked out this. These site plans are a whole different world. Of course, in an airport, you're going to have vehicles, different kinds of vehicles coming in and off the airstrips. You have one on, on the bottom. You get vehicles coming in and out of the back there. And then there's going to be a turnaround from the front, and there's going to be the public comes in and parks in the front here. And on the side, is the private parking and that has to be secured because it's part of the airport so there's a fence between the airport lands and the public lands and you shouldn't be able to run across onto the airfield so this is a special spot where the public space and the institutional space of the airport actually meets and there's a, a line in the building where you're allowed to go and where you're not allowed to go so it's kind of interesting building in that case because both public and private and it's a service building for everybody so let's look at the next one. Drilling down into this, here's the ground floor plan. Now this is where the functions really take off and, and this is a very ideal plan because you've got all the colors laid out for you showing circulation. The red is circulation. And all the blue around here is the residence. Now the entry sequence is usually how you explain these things. So you come in, you get out of your car, you get out, you go over the sidewalk, you go underneath the roof overhang and there's a big pylon in the front that has the sign of course, it's got to have signs to, to, to tell you, yeah, you're in the right place. So you go inside. Now, it's all glass around here, and it's well shaded because, you know, that sun is super hot in Florida, and you've got to shade the glass. Otherwise, people are going to cook, and the air conditioning is going to be expensive. And you go in there, and you wait. This is the public area, but all the functions around the public area. Of course, the fire chief's office is there because the fire chief it represents the fire station. The fire chief is a very important person. Now, in the doors, you've got, you go around to this gray area, the public area, and then you've got 
In the back of house, you have all the functions of the airport, which I'm not going to get into each one because, you know, we only have so much time and it's kind of a little detailed. But you'll see also, Gray, is an area where you can sit and watch presentations. Because there's going to be a public function. Presentations are part of it where, where the institution, the airport, talks about itself and the airport to the public. Public comes in, there's meetings there, there's social functions. You know, it's a, it's a great little space. Now, coming in to the more private red, green areas, there's a gym. And the gym is, well, the guys have got to work out. They can't exactly run around the airport. <laughs> so they've got to have a gym and it's got to be, you know, a serviceable gym for the few guys that are there. And I mean, mostly guys, let's face it, it's pretty, pretty heavy duty job uh, running into airplanes and putting out fires. It's going to be going to, going to be pretty uh, hazardous. So and there's a TV room with big Barca lounger chairs where you can sit back and, yeah, you know, watch your favorite show. It, it is a lot of time. And of course, training videos, of course, training videos. And here at the bottom is the cafe with a kitchen. Now, this is the heart of the place is the kitchen. This is where all the meals are made can't go out to restaurants after all they're going to be far away and you've got to be you've got to be there at all times just in case there's an emergency you'll see a photograph a little bit from that kitchen looking out into the airport that's the ideal shot so that looks at the whole site plan let's go ahead and go to the next one well here we are we're sitting around <laughs> this is a little painting of mine there's a fire chief he's hanging out making a presentation and all the firefighters are around the table and they're all doing their thing. And of course, there's a little low bench here. Uh, someone's sitting there having a coffee at the bench. And out is all the planes landing and taking off and parking and taxiing around. This is the, I don't know, it's almost like a Star Trek uh, shot. <laughs> but you'll notice something funny. There's a, a guy kind of sitting without a chair. That, that was pointed out. I, I don't know how that happened. But in my speed, I sort of, had an issue where there was a guy without a chair. Oh, too late. No one will notice. Oh, yeah, they noticed. There's a guy sitting without a chair to sit on. He's kind of sharing two chairs. The expression with colors, it's, it's a linoleum floor. There's a lot of bluey, spacey stuff at the top. Lots of mechanical and structure exposed. There's hanging lighting. There's a colored wall, a you know, feature wall where everybody's supposed to address the speaker. Yeah, there's the space. And it's all done with this painting type techniques. Now, even all the little spaces I drew up very quickly. The, on the upper left, there's a corridor coming in from the entrance where you get the sea down and in. You can see it's a very high space and the slope of the roof. The slope of the roof is always present in some way. Now, on the, on the next one over to the right, there's a gym and, you know, a little bit of a weight. So I didn't put all the equipment in, but, you know, I'm going to draw this in reasonable time. And you're going to have some expression of, of the ceiling height and views through to other rooms. So you can look at people working out and other people can look at you. So there's kind of a two-way uh, window there. And on the bottom is reception. You know, this, this is my little drawing of reception where you look out into the landscape. It's beautifully shaded and you get to see people come and go. And the public comes in and can address the reception person. This is where all the paperwork is and all the administrative works are. And this is where the admin people hang out. And then maybe the chief's office. Maybe it's not on the right. Maybe that's the meeting area. Yeah, I think it's probably the meeting area. I think the chief's office was connected to the admin there. Oh, well, you know what this is? This is the Barca loungers with everybody watching TV or watching videos or watching training. Like whatever they do in their spare time, it's that ghosty light of people sitting around in thick, thick paint. I thought this is the last time on earth I'm ever going to be able to do this before computers come. And this is the final build-out. This is the ARF, TIA ARF, Tampa International Airport Airfield Firefighting Rescue. Yeah. <laughs> and on the right, you're going to see this. This is actually a part of a runway transit area where there's a bridge over the road. You see the road on the left where they've got to go over the road. So this little edge, this is the secret, You've got to be able to see this edge from a control tower, which is hidden by these trees, but the line of sight from the control tower to the edge of the runway has to be always visible. That's why the slope of the roof, and it really does just graze the top of the roof, so it's kind of a miracle roof in that way. 
it just squeaks in everything squeaks in tight just right under that roof i mean i didn't really have to do that I, something could have could stuck up but i thought it was just a a great thing to have to respect the lines of vision all around the airport you're seeing the landscape around big fields of green and uh, the landscaping treatment and right ahead with the flag is the entrance remember that flag in the original first rendering well there it is and there's your target you get to turn right park go in hang out and on the left there's the residences the guys who sit sitting in there it's kind of a little buoy and here's the sign we talked about now it's just painted on letters they didn't use cut out letters they didn't do anything fancy but it's a nice lease size sign has the the Tampa logo below it and inside is all the functions nicely shaded by the overhang and here are here they are <laughs> having coffee talking about something and somebody's cooking now they kind of deleted the bench they they put it the other way but you know you can't be precious about your original ideas that's just the way things go down so the, uh, the table goes the other way you know that's okay too maybe more people get to see out that way i don't know maybe they didn't want to make presentations in that room maybe you put it in another room that's okay too or maybe the furniture is flexible they can move it around that's also possible the final technologist that did the drafting did the detailed design and i was saying before in an earlier video that design happens all the way through not just at the very early stages when i work it but all the way to all the way through to the final detailing there is changes there is improvements there's client input especially in an airport because the big meetings happen and there's lots of wonderful input by everybody especially the fire chief who has got lots to say about the colors the finishes the functions the costs it has to work it has to work like a team okay and a little post-it board on the right so that's how it worked and they want they, they went for the big high high arch where you can see everything it's open and bright and i you know i didn't necessarily think that was a good view i wanted to be a good spatial separation between the kitchen space and the, and the meeting space but they decided ah uh, why so they're, they're gonna they opened it all up so good for them well these are the bays now remember those bays we saw these are the big trucks that go out and do their special job in putting out those fires and those poor planes that are burning like crazy. And you'll see a slide on the end about a burning plane. It's it's pretty hard. These are special trucks. Uh, one of these trucks has a needle that punctures the plane and squirts foam inside of it from outside. It, it really is something. It doesn't happen often, obviously, but when it does, it has to happen fast because those planes are full of jet fuel and that explodes. So you know, this is a really big deal. These you're going to see above there's a slope roof there's the heights there's a lot of equipment that has to come down to service the trucks the bays are very important to spacing the bays i don't know why there's columns there i would have tried to get rid of those columns but i think just because the trucks have bays i guess the columns aren't important they're just not important to have no column space in this case and here it is these are the guys doing what they do fighting the fires the fire fire persons as we say in Canada <laughs> the persons and they are putting them out and they do this a lot it's a training exercise so they can say sharp it doesn't happen often so they've got to train often so this is a live training demo and it's done you know you can see this on YouTube if you want you see Tampa ARF you know firefighting demos and you're gonna see them put the, put it out pretty big deal putting out a burning plane is not funny well, this leads me to the last slide, and I'm not going to talk about this one because it's getting a little long. This is a big airport job in Orlando going to Disneyland. All right, this is a 16 gates for HOK Aviation. This job got nixed by 9-11. <laughs> I got to design it all, but 9-11 put the kibots on this thing. So we'll talk about it next time. This is interesting because it has to do with big airports, big airports with all their complicated city-like transit issues and the technology of landing and taking off oh yeah this is good and i'm going to explain it all to you in hand drawings so you know why not so thanks now what can we do at the end of this one we can probably talk about something special let's go back to maybe an earlier slide yeah maybe not those are pretty strange how about the site plan yeah Today, when I was 
growing up as an architect, when I was a young guy, we had certain jobs to do. We could feed drawings through the printing machine, smelly, ammonia everywhere, but we got to see those drawings. We got to handle them. They were physical objects. And I'm not saying the old days bear today. Today, with computers, it's far superior to things. <laughs> You're so much easier. Erasing things is easier. <laughs> so it's really, the physical labor of making a drawing just is not what it used to be. But the, the, the problem is, is that you don't get a chance to interact with drawings. You don't interact with physical sheets of paper, with ink lines and pencil lines, real physical works of art almost that draftsmen have sat and labored over, and labor is an obvious word when you do this, but it's not really labor, it's, it's intellectual pursuit. It's a beautiful thing going through a stack of drawings. Don't get to do it anymore now, we have plots. But back in the day, I think in the 80s, before computers in the BC times, you used to go through stacks and stacks of drawings. One of your jobs as an intern was to file things. So you would take these big three foot by four foot or four foot by even more drawings and you would shove them in folder drawers. You would shove them in. And in the process, you got to see a lot of up close details. You got to see a lot of up close drawings. So. You know, the real question is, how do you transmit the knowledge of architecture? How do you get it into people's heads? It's a great challenge because there's a lot to learn. And you can't take it in school, you know, all the time because you're really out of the medium. To learn it, you have to be in the flow of the information. Being in an old firm meant you had drawers full of old documents with thousands and thousands of person hours, person hours, and... You get to experience that firsthand. Feeling, touching, looking close by. You have the time paid by your employer, thank you employer, to look at these drawings. Today, with computers, not so much. And with computers, you're not exactly going to just click through CAD files on a database. Doesn't happen. Don't have to, right? You don't have to do it. You don't have to file CAD files. They're already filed. They're already in their little folders and they get backed up and there you go. You don't have to look at them anymore. Nobody gets to look at the thousands and thousands of hours of drawings and all the lines. In fact, the drawings are typically not that pretty. The drawings are done all in the same robotic way. Some people thought that the whole profession was going to go down the tubes because the drawings look so boring in AutoCAD. Well, I tried to make, in my case, the CAD as beautiful as I could and I combine it with Illustrator, and it's, here's a plan, done in Illustrator, with some, some layers and some colors and some simple line weights. And, you know, you're doing the best you can to bring back that love of a drawing, that love of planning and organization and graphics, lettering, layout, that was part of the original design process of architecture going back hundreds of years. Still do my best, and now that Revit's here, which will... In the end, we're going to look at Revit and how it's improved the whole design process. A lot of that love of the drawing has come back, and it's come back in strength, combined with rendering and modeling like you won't believe. It's, in a way, a far superior medium. You are lacking the physical touch of a drawing and the look of ink, and, and you know your hands are getting all dirty as you draw every line. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Gone. But... but you know, won't be missed that much. You can always get your hands dirty, I don't know, yourself as a hobby if you want to. The issue though is today it's a clean, technical, sophisticated computer operation. You have to be a little bit computer scientist to get into it. And you know, I had to learn how to build computers and how to put it together just to make this YouTube video. <laughs> so uh, really it's, uh, it's, it's a brand new age. I love it, but we miss the old days. And for you young architects just starting off, it's a little bit of a challenge, I know, for you to get going because like, how are you supposed to learn this stuff? Well, I encourage you to click through those folders and I encourage you to look at those old drawings. And what I'm going to try and do is show you as best I can the things that you never get to see unless you're, you know, the Tampa airport people who are the lucky people who get to look at these. The public will never see them. So I'm going to try and make them a little more accessible to you here so that you can see it. And I have my own reasons. I mean, I'm trying to find work. So... If in, in some way someone in the airport facility gets to see this, maybe they're going to want to have me work, help them build their next renovation to their airport. Maybe not. All right? That's the way it is. 
So that's today's presentation. Next time we'll look at a big airport job, a big fantastic job at Disney. So that's going to be really interesting, and I hope you're enjoying this channel. Thank you for coming by.